Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be going over anatomical directions. So anatomical directions are very, very important here. Let me play this video of the little skeleton right here. So like I was saying, anatomical directions are very important. When we're describing things in anatomy and physiology, we're describing them in relation. Oh, there's Watson, he just wants to say hi. We're describing them in relation to anatomical position. So one feature related to another. So how do we What's the terminology we use? And that's what this video is gonna go over. I'm gonna use the same skeleton video in the next one where we go over the different body regions. So that's why I have little zoomed in versions here. We're gonna be talking about different regions on the body. But first, I just wanna use this general overview here for talking about anatomical directions. So I'm gonna to switch to the pen now. And when you're, when you're doing this, practice. Practice describing different things relative to another thing. Now, everything is described relative to anatomical position. So this skeleton right here is in anatomical position. So by the way, uh, the skeleton's name is Dr. Captain Jack Marrow. That is my personal skeleton. So we're getting, getting to use him for the video here. He's not perfect, but he's a good enough representation to show. It's not as good as the classroom models, but here he is attempting to be in anatomical position. His bones might be a little um, misplaced, but <laughs> It does a decent uh, job. So here, thumbs are pointing outwards. So thumbs out, palms forward. That is anatomical position. When you describe one thing related to another, you're describing it in terms of anatomical position. So if you're comparing radius and ulna, radius is lateral, ulna is medial. Uh, so little things like that come into play for anatomical positions. So now, what, how do we want to start first going over a few different ones? And like I said, when you're doing this, try to make your own sentences out of these two. So the first one here is superior verse versus um, inferior. So superior is up or towards the head. Inferior is below. Uh, so toward the head or upper part of a structure or body uh, or meaning above, and then inferior is away from the head or toward the lower part of the body. Now, don't mix these up, um, not really mix them up, but you just might see these referred to as cranial or caudal. Now, be careful with these ones, because caudal really means tailbone, or like the caudal region down here. So when you're describing the lower limbs and you say caudal, it could confuse um, the person saying it. So if you're describing lower limbs, you want to use superior versus inferior. So an example here would be the uh, cervical vertebrae. So here are the cervical vertebrae are superior to the lumbar vertebrae. Or you could say the uh, cerv cervical vertebrae are cranial to the lumbar. You could say the lumbar are caudal or inferior to the cervical superior. So you can say these sentences different ways, and you want to work on saying these sentences in your head as well. Next two terms here are anterior versus ventral. No, anterior is ventral. One second, one second. I screwed that one up. Uh, let me find my eraser. I meant to write that in parentheses beside it. Uh, so anterior versus posterior. So anterior is also known as ventral. Posterior is also known as dorsal. This is what I was meaning to do. So just like the last one, there are some other terms we can use to describe these. So what, is, what do these mean? Anterior means toward the front. So towards the front. Posterior means towards back. So dorsal, dorsal fin on a dolphin is on the back side. The post, you lean up against a post on the back side. That's how I remember that anterior is towards the front. Uh, ventral also means towards the front. So you could say the sternum, so right here's the sternum, is anterior to the vertebrae or the heart, um, is in front of the heart. Uh, so anterior, you might be looking at images. So if I show a anterior image of the heart. You know you're looking at the side of the heart that's facing 
the observer towards the front. If you're looking at the posterior side of the heart, you're looking at the back side, the side that's towards the back. So these two terms here are used a lot when looking at images of organs in different structures. It will be in the caption of the figure, it will be described as being anterior or posterior. So you can think of a whole bunch of ways you can use these as well. So you know something as simple as being um, the scapula is posterior compared to the clavicle. Um, so a couple different examples you can use there as well. Again, ventral and dorsal could also be used here interchangeably too. So you can't forget those as well. All right, uh, next one now, we can move into, I, I did mention these ones earlier. I wanna move down here. Uh, actually, we'll go right here. We'll use these three as an example. So now we're doing, oops, uh, back to my pen. Ooh, it got a little thick there. So medial versus lateral. You can also throw another one in here versus intermediate. These ones are used a lot in describing the bones in relation to each other and bones where they are in the body in anatomical position. So here, medial is towards the midline. M is middle, remember, going down the skeleton here, going down the individual, there's an imaginary line in the middle. That's the, think of that as the midline. So medial is something that's towards the midline. So here, the sternum would be medial compared to the humerus. Lateral is towards the side. So the humerus would be lateral compared to the sternum, which is medial. Now, intermediate is if something's in between two things. So you could say the clavicle is intermediate between the humerus and the sternum. So like I said, you can use a couple different ways to describe things. Uh, you can talk about it in it's whatever you're in reference to, and it's in reference to anatomical position. And one important thing with anatomical position here, if I move forward in this video, right here, I mentioned this one earlier, but in the, for the forearm, when in anatomical position, right here is your radius. The radius, because the thumb, and right here's the radius on this side, because the thumb is facing outwards and palms are facing outwards, so when you have your arm like this compared to like this, the radius and the ulna switch place. So these are the ones that definitely depend on being anatomical position. So here, the radius is lateral and the ulna is medial when describing them in relation to each other when in anatomical position. So make sure you keep that in mind and that's the importance of understanding anatomical position, especially for the radius and the ulna. All right, uh, now, one that's used to describe limbs. Here, we'll just show the arms right here. Good example of this. So we have proximal and distal. So proximal versus distal. So now, what are these two? This is, so when we're describing something going down the appendages, something is further away and something might be closer. So we can use these terms here, proximal or distal. Proximal means closer to the origin. Distal means further away from the origin. So if we're describing the, the shoulder versus the elbow, you can say the shoulder is proximal to the elbow. And when we're going over bones, I'll say this is the proximal end of the humerus, this is the distal end of the humerus. And when I say those terms, you know the orientation of the humerus. That's why these are really important to know. Um, or you can say the elbow is distal to the humerus. Again, it, the, your sentence varies on what you're describing in relation to what. And if I bring the wrist into this, the wrist is distal to the elbow. The elbow is proximal to the wrist. So you can make tons of different sentences. Make your own sentences. Make sure you understand how you're describing something in relation to something else. Okay, last two terms here are superficial. which also can mean external, or you can also say external, versus uh, deep, which you can interchange with internal. Sorry for my handwriting. Uh, so superficial versus deep. This one's used a lot when describing muscles, arteries, and veins. So when I say the term arteries run deep to veins, it means arteries are deeper into the body, more internal. Um, so towards the inside, whereas superficial is more towards the body surface. So the skin is superficial 
to the skeleton, <laughs> as in a silly example. Or the skin is superficial to the muscles. The muscles are deep to the skin. So you, so these ones um, are used a lot as well, especially when we get to the muscles, when we look at more superficial muscles compared to deep muscles or different layers of muscles as we get closer to the skeletal system. So we'll see those there. We'll see them come back for arteries, veins, nerves, and so forth. So some are more deep, some are more superficial. When I say superficial versus deep, when describing those, then we get a better idea of where they're located. Um, so very important, important terms to know. Um, so think of the sentences that you would say for these um, and make sure if I give you a sentence that you can get a good idea of how you would describe that. And then here, I'll play Watson again. There's Watson. That's my dog, Watson. And this is again, Dr. Captain Jack Merrill. He, you know, this is the fun of recording from home now and not in the class. This is the one model recording I have uh, from home. So I will use this one again for going over the body regions in the next video. So the important regions of the body, which will help you name things. I think my skeleton is a little scoliosis too, which is a lateral curvature of the spine. Uh, but we'll get into that later. So this is just showing the rest of the video here. I'll use this one again in the next recording. Uh, so make sure you watch that one too. But that's all I have for this one. Make sure you understand your anatomical directions in there. You can see the scoliosis of the spine. But yes, make sure you understand the different terms we use for the anatomical directions. These are the important ones we're going to be using throughout the semester. So make your own sentences, practice on your own, and let me know if you have any questions. But with that, I hope you all have a great day, and bye-bye.